welcome back to Maltmiller HQ where something's just come to fruition that we spoke about on our round table talk during Christmas and that is our new range of yeast from Brew Labs. Before we get too far into the video, please make sure you subscribe to our channel, hit the bell for notifications and follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. For anybody watching at home, they may be wondering what a yeast slope is, Rob. Can you answer that question? Okay, so traditionally we've been looking between dry yeast, simply rip open the packet and chuck it in, yep. and wet yeast, which is basically imported all the way from the States, um, where starters might be involved. It's slightly more involved. Yes. This slopes from brew labs is kind of a step in between we are taking a few cells that are grown on an agar plate and we are growing them on to the pitching rate we require for our own work okay so while there's a process involved with this rob it does sound like it's far more flexible for the brewer to be able to actually grow the amount of yeast starter that they need for their batch size yeah it's super easy no specific equipment's in involved or anything like that so for anybody that hasn't heard of brew lab before rob who are they uh, they're part of the uk brewing history as far as suppliers are concerned really a really awesome company that do blocks of education uh, but they also do yeast banking as well, and they do it for breweries up and down the country. I think that their yeast bank is completely unrivaled. They've got thousands of, of yeast samples banked um, that we have now, because we're working with them, we've now got the ability to be able to call on. So these slopes are just a start. We can go the world's our oyster. So to get started with using yeast slopes, do I need any specialist equipment? No, not at all. As long as you've got a glass jar that you can sterilise and some tin foil, we're good, we're good to go. So like a jam jar or a kilner, something like that? Yeah, definitely something like that. You can take it further. We can supply stir plates and conical flasks and that sort of thing. That's because as home brewers, we always want to add that extra bit, extra bit. But that's not actually necessary. We can, we can go with just a sterilised jar. Okay, fab. So we've touched on the equipment there. Are there any other ingredients or things that I'm going to need other than the yeast slope and the jam jar? Yeah, sure. We need some starter work. Okay. So we need to have a solution, DME solution, or some saved work from a previous batch that you might have frozen, for example. Yeah. Anything that's sterile. Yeah. All right. So that just so that we can grow the yeast just in a tiny amount and we can just top it up and keep on growing the yeast. Whilst this might be a little bit more involved than just opening up a packet of dry yeast and putting it in the fermenter at the end of the brew day, actually I get loads more flexibility with this and it isn't. It doesn't sound particularly challenging. Uh, it's not challenging at all and it's giving the brewer way more control over their pitching weight rates which is exactly what we're trying to do. We will be shipping every one of these yeast slopes with full instructions. Yeah. Okay, so the basic idea is we're going to make a malt extract solution we're then going to wash the yeast cells off of the agar that they're housed on. And then we're going to grow that into more yeast, a bigger volume. Rob, it doesn't sound particularly complex, but just to be really transparent, let's get into the detail. It's super easy. In our jar that's got to be at least 500 ml, we're going to pour 300 millilitres of boiling water. When it's cool enough, as in it's not steaming anymore, we're going to add three tablespoons of malt extract powder yep. and then dissolve it. That's our starter work. Okay. We need to obviously make sure that it's down to yeast pitching temperature. So it needs to be down to about 20 degrees. As with everything in brewing, I'm assuming that all of our equipment needs to be clean and sanitized before we even get started. Yeah, exactly that. So we're, we've sanitized our jar, we've got boiling water and we know that our malt extract powder is sterile anyway. So we've got our starter solution made up, ready to go. What's next? How do we get the yeast in there? So we just need to take the cap off of our test tube. We need to pour in a little tiny amount of the starter work just so that we can dissolve the surface, which includes the yeast cells. Once we've done that, we just pour it back into our starter solution. And then how will I know that it's worked? You will see normal type fermentation. So you'll see Krausen on the top, and actually, we want this to completely ferment out. So it needs to have that high Krausen. You'll notice the Krausen disappear and the yeast settle back on the bottom of the vessel. That's when it's fully fermented out. 
we can then take it on to the next step. Obviously, it's really important to note that we can't fully close the vessel because we've got fermentation going on that's given off CO2 and we don't want any explosion. Either put the lid on loosely or cover it with tinfoil. This starter solution that we've made initially, the 300 millilitres with the yeast dissolved in it, can I pitch that straight into my um, wort at the end of brew day? Okay, so we have to think about pitching rates here. So that 300 ml will be suitable for about 20 litres of beer at 1040. So looking at it realistically, no, we're going to need to do the next step because okay. most of the beers that we're brewing are more than that. So we need to repeat the process. We need to add more of the malt extract solution, our starter solution, into the ready fermented wort, which will kick it off again and grow more yeast. And obviously you can repeat this for as many times as you need for your particular beer that you're brewing. I guess if anybody really wants to check how much they need, they can head to our website and check out the yeast pitching calculator that we've got on there, right? This is where those calculators become really super, super useful. So when it comes to brew day, at the end, when I've got my wort in the fermenter, is it just a case then of pouring in what's in my conical flask or jar straight into the fermenter with the wort? Okay, couple of things. We can make this starter previously and it can be stored in the fridge. Okay. Okay, when it comes to brew day, what we want to be doing is pitching the yeast slurry and not the beer, the clear beer that's on top of it. Ah, okay. So if we take it out of the fridge, decant off the top the clear beer, swirl around so that the yeast becomes back into into solution and that's what we want to be pitching into our beer hopefully you will have found this a good introduction to the whole world of producing beer using our brew labs yeast slopes this is just the first part in this journey for us on this whole story of yeast which we're focused on at the moment so actually what we would love to do is hear questions comments and thoughts from you so put them in the comments below send us an email drop us a message because what we can then do is actually go to Brew Labs, yeah. find out the answers for you, come back to you with them, and actually help improve everybody's knowledge on the topic of growing your own yeast starters. And having Brew Labs support to do that is absolutely fantastic. We hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, hit the bell for notifications. Don't forget, you can follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and have a great brew.